In this video, we find out the results of the Trub Trapper versus the Hop Sack, and that's coming up next. This experiment brought to you in part by Oregon Brew Lab for all of your fermentation testing needs. Testing as low as $10 per sample with digital results in 48 hours of sample arrival. Join the 160 plus commercial brewers who utilize OBL for fast, affordable, and accurate beer analysis. Visit them today at OregonBrewLab.com. And buy more beer. Home of the free Super Saver shipping where most orders over $59 ship for free anywhere in the continental U.S. How's it going? My name is Brian. I'd like to welcome you to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, and all other home brewing related stuff, hit the subscribe button, be sure and ring the bell so you'll be notified the next time we put out a video. So some time ago, I started an experiment with the Trub Trapper, which is a product that more beer sells, and they sent me one for a review, and I thought, you know what? I think I'd rather do something more interesting than just brew a beer, throw the Trub Trapper in the bottom of the kettle, and you know see what happens. So I thought, I've always wanted to try to brew a beer that was nothing but Whirlpool hops. I know some commercial breweries do it, but I thought, you know, it'd be fun to try it myself. So um, came up with a simple recipe, 20 pounds of two row, two or three pounds of, mel of carapils, and a pound of melanoid malt. And the hop schedule on it was four ounces of Amarillo and four ounces of Citra. And those were to go in at the Whirlpool after I turned off the element. So I did a live brew day and I have to say thanks to everybody that hung out with me that day. It was a really, really long brew day. It was like seven hours of brewing. I collected all the wort in the, in the kettle, drained half of it off into a bucket, and then boiled one half, put in the hops at the uh, flame out or element off, if you will, and whirlpooled them for 30 minutes, chilled that down, same thing again on the next batch. So uh, really interesting fermentation on these two. I used, a, incidentally, I used Y yeast 1332 yeast. Uh, it's like a American ale yeast. And I'll tell you what, that'll be the last time I ever used that one because of the fact that it took such a, it was a long drawn out fermentation. One thing that that long drawn out fermentation did do was allow me to kind of observe what was going on. The one that I tossed all of the hops into the hop sack at Whirlpool was much cleaner looking in the fermentation. And the one that I just dumped the pellets in the kettle and let the Trub Trapper do its job was a much more cloudy. Trub-wise, they were about the same, but it was very interesting to see the fermentation and how all of that you know, came together. Um, was able to get a group, a uh, small panel together in order to do some triangle testing. And I talked about this on social media and I was actually contacted by uh, Drew Beecham and they invited me to come on Experimental Brewing. So. I wanted to perform a triangle test before I went on there. And uh, I have to say thank you to Combustion Brewing in Pickerington, Ohio, as well as Stacy Green, one of the uh, fellow SODs members of my home brew club. He kind of arranged that for me. So we got a bunch of people together. And the results of that triangle testing were seven out of 10 people picked out the, the different beer. And of the, of the seven of those 10, they were almost split down the middle on which beer they preferred. Some of the things that they said about the beer were the differences in the beer were one was smoother than the other, uh, one had more sharp bitterness than the other one did. The thing that I perceived when I was taking samples was that the Trub Trapper had a much harsher bitterness or a stronger, sharper bitterness to it. And the one that I did with the Hop Sack had a much lighter, um, smoother bitterness to it. And those people in that survey that did the triangle testing said the same thing. After I did the triangle testing, it was a little bit of time before I was able to catch up with uh, Drew and Denny because one of them was out of the country. So I actually packaged up three of the beers, labeled them so that I could do a triangle test live with them on their podcast. Uh, it was really super interesting. After the podcast, the number of people that correctly identified it jumped by one. And I'll let you guys go listen to the podcast so you can find out which one of those guys it is. I'll link it up in the description below, but podcast should be out same time as this video is out. So. Um, I did send a sample of the beers off to Oregon Brew Lab, had them analyzed. And what was interesting to me was, here's the numbers on it. The beer that was in the hop sack came out to be an IBU of 45.5. So there were 45.5 IBUs with the hop sack. And one of the things that Dana at Oregon Brew Labs told me was that IBU is not necessarily always the mark of bitterness. So, um, and I think that kind of holds true because the Trub Trapper, the IBUs on that came out to 47.5, which 
which in my personal opinion, I would have thought it would have been much higher. So it was very interesting to see that result. I would have certainly thought that it would have been much farther apart. Now, the other part of the experiment was to see how well Beersmith dealt with those Whirlpool additions. According to my software, by putting in the hops at that point in the, the boil or in the Whirlpool and, and Whirlpooling them for 30 minutes, the IBU should have, been, should have been about 115 IBU. So as you can see, it was much, much less bitterness extraction or IBUs. And one thing with regard to that perception issue, uh, the guys over at Experimental Brewing did a really great podcast with Glenn Tenseth, the designer of the IBU formula. And there were a lot of things that were pretty revealing on that. I do use that particular formula for my IBU calculations. It was made a long time ago, and he would even tell you it was made with whole hops. And, you know, but there were other, some other factors involved. You know, the, the storage capa capabilities of, you know, the hop farms today were not what they were back then. There's a lot of different things. And, and what Glenn said was that, you know, use your software as a baseline. And if, you know, if you find that 45 IBUs calculated in your system is not bitter enough for you, add more. So, you know, it's not an exact science, but it is some place to get started. And to let you guys know too, I did sign up for their Igor program, which is the Independent Group of Research Subjects, <laughs> which is kind of funny. And uh, so hopefully I can bring some more experiments to you guys. I really enjoyed doing this one and then in kind of talking with them and looking over some of the stuff that they've done, hopefully I'll be able to publish some more experiments and be involved with that with them. I really enjoyed doing this. As far as my opinion on a winner, I don't know that there's a clear cut winner. I will tell you that there were some interesting things that occurred. I might like to try to do this experiment again because of the fact that early on in the fermentation, the hop sack had a very strong aroma of all of the hops. And once fermentation was completed, they were about the same. But I will tell you, and, and even early samples, I thought there was going to be a really huge difference in the amount of aroma and everything in the final beer, but there really wasn't in the end. And I don't know if that was due to the long fermentation or what, but I have some speculation on whether the huge mass of hops in the hop sack actually held some of those more fragile fragrance aromas, uh, you know, in the solution, whereas the stuff that was dumped in the trub trapper was exposed to all that heat. And that's the other thing too, I might, you know, like to reduce the heat down to a certain temperature before I threw in the hops because doing some research after doing this, I found that, you know, throwing them in at boil can certainly cause a lot of the aromas to boil off. So as far as a winner, I'll have to leave it up to you guys as I've done in some of my other reviews. But um, I do think the Trub Trapper is a great device. I really like using it. I've been using it ever since I did that one brew. I will put a link in the description below for it. So you guys can go check it out over at More Beer. They do make two different sizes of it. Also, it's kind of a little bonus for my viewers. Dana over at Oregon Brew Lab has enacted a promo code and the promo code is SPARK. And what you can get for that promo code, if you get an ABV test and use the promo code, you'll get a free IBU test. So just a little something I wanted to kind of give back to you guys for uh, putting up with the nonsense and waiting for, <laughs> waiting for the results to come back. So as always, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We will see you on the next video.